So listen, there's, there's a lot to be excited about in Fuji's X-series of cameras. Uh, the X-Pro2, the X-T2 are two cameras that a lot of street photographers love. Now the X-T2, as it turns out, you can't really get it right now. It's backordered for infinity. Uh, but a lot of guys are rocking the X-Pro2, but there's been a, a gaping uh, hole in the lineup since day one. They haven't had a fast uh, and lightweight and small 35mm equivalent prime lens for street photographers to use. Until now, now they have it. It's a 23mm. Now it's 23mm because the uh, Fuji X-Series are APS-C size cameras. The sensor is a little bit smaller than a typical full frame sensor, so in order to have the same field of view, you have to go back to a wider lens. So 23 millimeters sort of approximates what 35 millimeter would see on the camera. The Fuji lineup had the 23 millimeter f1.4, uh, which is widely regarded as a fantastic lens, and I've shot with it and it's great, but it's just so damn big. It's the size of a coffee cup on the front of your camera. Uh, who wants to carry that around? I mean, if I was, if I was shooting at night, then the extra stop would be fantastic, but for general purpose street photography lens, it just wasn't cutting it for me. So this lens, you know, I would say the entire X series hangs on this lens. You know, the, 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 some photographers like 28 millimeter, some photographers like 50 millimeter. I'm a 35 millimeter shooter. So when I say the entire series hangs on it, I mean for me, why shoot 35 millimeter? Some people say, oh, it closely approximates the human eye. Uh, other people will say, for me, it's just what I've been shooting with my entire adult life. If I walk up to a scene and put the camera to my eye, I have the framing I want automatically. It's just where my head is when I'm shooting. So, you know, it's, whether it changes the perspective or changes the angle, eh, that's not that's not something that I really care about. It's just really where I'm comfortable and it's the zone for me. If you shoot a 20 millimeter, go get the 20 millimeter, I don't care. This one is what I need, so I'm sticking with it. Let's talk about lens specs. The lens is a metal, metal construction. It's metal exterior. I, I, I'm assuming it's all metal. There might be some plastic parts in it. That's not the end of the world. It's super light, it's like 180 grams. Specs, hold on, I, I have it written down. Uh, it has uh, 10 elements in six groups with two aspherical elements to ensure flatness of image plane for edge to edge sharpness. <laughs> the aspherical elements are used as part of a focusing group to minimize performance fluctuations between different focal distances. All right, so yeah, it's good. It's got aspherical elements, it's good. It's got all the stuff, it's got the tapered design so you don't block the optical viewfinder on the X-Pro2. It's a lens hood. Oh, here's something interesting. On the 35 F2 WR, the aperture felt super duper tight and almost mushy. It was kind of difficult to click it into place. This one feels about as good as any Fuji lens that I've used. It's they're, they're sort of sharply defined clicks. It has enough tension that you're not gonna move it accidentally. It just feels like they've refined the entire manufacturing process here. It's weather resistant, I don't know. It's gonna be, who cares what the specs are? That's someone else's blog, that's not mine. This is really about how this lens performs in the real world. And what better way to talk about it than to talk about it instead of actually just taking it out and using it. But you don't have the lens and I do, so you have to listen to me. We'll talk about the autofocus. It's blazing fast, uh, especially on one of the new bodies, the X-Pro2, the X-T2, it's blazing fast. Uh, and they do this by optimizing the elements that move inside. They, they move the smallest elements for focusing. The inner focus AF system uses a stepping motor to drive lightweight focusing elements for silent and fast autofocus. When combined with the phase detection AF system on many X-series cameras, X-Pro2, X-T2, etc., the lens can focus in an astonishing 0.05 seconds. Specs. All the focusing happens internally. It's just quick, it's fast, it's accurate. You're not going to, I'm not gonna say you're not going to, but chances are you're rarely gonna miss focus with it. So yeah, we get, look at the whole idea is they, they, they optimize which elements move, they use a stepping motor, it's, it's state-of-the-art technology. Uh, it's just good. I can read all this crap all you want, it doesn't matter. Um, but again, now I, I always, this is something that's really interesting because I use the faux zone focus uh, method when I shoot. So I, I set the camera to manual focus, I set the lens to the hyperfocal distance, which on a 23 millimeter lens on an APS-C body is approximately 12 and a half feet. And then everything from about six feet to infinity is in focus. I just walk around the street and shoot like I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it's good to know that if I need to just hit the back button focus, it's gonna be quick to get to something closer. But here's another thing, at least on the, for manual focus guys, at least on the X-Pro2, I haven't been able to verify on the X-T2 with the latest firmware, but on the X-Pro2, 
the depth of field scale finally works. Anyone who's used Fuji knows that they're, they have a depth of field scale in manual focus mode and it's just not even close to reality. It basically shows you have, you know, stopped all the way down at F8. Uh, you have about four feet of, of uh, depth of field, which is entirely wrong. So now with this lens on this body, you set your manual focus points to 12 and a half feet and you'll see that the depth of field, the blue depth of field scale at the bottom of the uh, viewfinder shows infinity to six feet exactly the way it should be. That's fantastic. So hopefully Fuji fixes that on all their cameras because it's been, it's been like six or seven years, guys. Come on, fix the depth of field scales. Uh, you proved you can do it here, so I want to see it on some other cameras. So this lens is the XF 23mm F2 WR... R. Uh, it's weather sealed. WR means weather resistant, I think. Weather, But, I mean, this isn't waterproof. I wouldn't go out in a torrential downpour with it, but, you know, if you're out and it starts sprinkling, you don't have to run for the hills uh, right away. So it's giving you a little bit of extra protection, which is nice. That's really all I have to say about that. So good, it's there. So pair it with the X-T2, pair it with the X-Pro2, and you got a nice little weather sealed combo that uh, you could feel pretty confident being out in just about any condition. You know, I mean, if it starts raining, I'm probably going to reach for my umbrella, but I'm not going to. With my X-100, I would be like, oh God, hide the camera. Don't let any water touch it. So anyways, there you go. That's it. Uh, weather resistant. Uh, build quality in this lens. I've already talked about the aperture feeling good and clicky. You know, other weather sealed lenses, the 35 F2 felt really kludgy to me. This is nice. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's light, but it feels solid. Um, yeah, it's got this, this fun little hood. Uh, the hood is like weird. It's, it attaches by bayonet uh, and it sort of goes, kind of goes in. It's like, you can see it, it goes in instead of out. So, I don't know, when it's on, it kind of makes the lens look wickedly way too long. <laughs> like it's like, why is that lens so dull? But, eh, it's sort of, it's in the box and it works, so I keep it on. I don't know if you need it or not, but it's there. Size-wise, this is about the same size as the 35 F2, if you've ever seen it. It's a little longer, but I don't know. When I first put it on the camera, I was like, ah, this lens is too long. I can't. After like a day, I was like, it's fine. The only issue was, you know, because I, 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 I'm a kind of shooter that keeps the camera around my neck and I'm walking around and I went around for like the first day if I was opening a door that I would bang the lens into the door because it was like longer than I was expecting. Um, but then I just stopped doing that. Let's talk about image quality. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, it's great. It works in the street. It focuses fast. Uh, it's lightweight. It doesn't matter how camera there's a clear All that stuff is good, but it's a lens. Uh, and if it doesn't produce good quality images, then there's no point. And well, the first thing anyone asks when they're talking about lenses is, mm, is it too sharp? Yep, sharp. But that's not the only thing that you have to think about with the lens. Lenses have character, they have color rendition, there's color contrast. It, it's got its own character, it's crisp, it's contrasty, uh, without appearing clinical. You know, there's a bullshit critique word that I used to use back in photo school uh, called fluidity. <laughs> All right, it's stupid. Uh, but anyone who's printed silver prints knows this. The way a print looks when it's in the fixer is next to impossible to replicate uh, for prints that are dry. It just looks better in water than it does out of water. And it's, there's a clarity, there's a clarity and a crispness and a contrast without it, the image breaking up that just doesn't, you just can't get in real life. And I used to call this fluidity because once in a while you'd see it in the print and you'd be like, that's a really, really, pretty. well, it's really hard to do, but that's sort of what this lens reminds me of. Look at some of the samples I've done. I've shot at night, I've shot in uh, broad daylight. It's not, anywhere I take it, it is performing admirably and giving me results that I am instantly happy with. Uh, the X100 lens, you know, there was times when the X100 would hit and it would be bang on. But there'd be other times when it just didn't perform great. It, it sort of needed a set of conditions and to really shine. And when I say it didn't perform great, I don't mean, oh, this lens is crap. I can't use any of these pictures. But every once in a while, the X100 lens would be like, fantastic. And this lens is kind of fantastic just about all the time. I don't think there's been a situation, a lighting situation that I've been in where it's failed me. Now, I got, I got to mention, there's this one thing that uh, people are noticing about this lens, and that's real. Uh, if you focus wide open with this lens, less than two feet, it's soft. It's like, ooh, they, ooh. if the whole lens was that way, they wouldn't sell one. Uh, so there's a problem shooting really close up, wide open with this lens, but you got to think of something. 
I'm a street photographer. I'm assuming you're a street photographer, although we've never met. Uh, so we should probably, you know, keep those boundaries in place. But for street photographers, it's not very often I'm going to be shooting inside of two feet wide open. It's just not what I'm going to do. And even if you're shooting inside of two feet and you go to f2.8, that problem goes away. It's there. You should be aware of it. But it's just, it's just a simple thing with lenses. Back in the day, uh, here we go, back in the day, because you know I'm an old timer. Uh, where's my walker? We always knew. You want the sharp picture, put your lens five, f5.6 or f8 and focus at 10. Like, we just knew there was manners in which lenses perform better uh, than other ways. And depending on what you wanted to do, you just used your equipment appropriately. So it's kind of hard now to say, oh, work around the problem, but you work around the problem. If, 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 that's, if you're shooting close-up stuff wide open, don't buy this lens. Get the 2314. It, you won't have the problem, but if you're not, then everything else about this lens is fantastic. So, oh, I could talk, go on and on about how great I think the pictures are. I go on out how fast it is. This lens is only 450 bucks. 449 at B&H right now. Um, that's cheap. I put it on an XT, XT2 or an X Pro 2, and man, oh man, Bob's your uncle. That's a good combo. Look at my pictures, look at the samples, uh, see if you like the image quality. I know I do. This lens is inexpensive, it's lightweight, it's sharp, it's fast. Uh, it looks great on a camera and uh, it's gonna be on mine. I'm gonna get one. Well, I don't know if you've been paying attention to my reviews, but I say that about everything that I get because I get all this stuff in to play with it and I'm like, I love it all. I really do, I mean, this is, this is good stuff and uh, it's not gonna break the bank, so. If, you're, if you've grown beyond the X100 and you want to have a little bit more versatility in your camera, have the ability to change those once in a while but still have that core 35mm street shooter aesthetic, man oh man, that's a great way to go. And they're available now. They're in black and silver, by the way. Uh, the silver one looks really cool. I got the black one now, but uh, just get whatever one you like that will look so. This is my 23mm F2 Fujicron lens review. Man, if you like what you watched, uh, don't forget to subscribe and check out streetshooter.com for more news, reviews, and information for street photographers just like you and me. Uh, and more importantly, let's go take some pictures already. Stop watching YouTube. Turn off your computer. Go, well, not yet. Go use my affiliate link and go buy this. And then turn off your computer and go take some pictures. Good. Why are you still here? Go. Four forty nine. 449? Yeah. Alright, so that's it. US dollars. <laughs>